In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a caustic image sequence for use in Blender or any other 3D package. However, in this video, I will be focusing on Blender specifically. So first of all, you'll see that I have PureRef open here on the right side of my workspace. I've used this application to gather my reference. Uh, it's what I always use. It's a fantastic program, free to use and easy to use. So you'll also notice that I've gathered some photos of caustics for reference, as well as some renders from Finding Dory, where we can see the caustics in action on the uh, sea floor here. I also did make sure to look up some video reference of caustics to get an idea of how they move as well. So if we jump on over to Nuke here, uh, what we're going to want to do is bring up our project settings in the properties panel. To do that, hit S. Next, we're going to want to set our frame range. For this video, I've used 120 frames. I do recommend using a large frame range, maybe even up to 300. Uh, that way, for any potential use you might have down the line, you can simply go into the directory that you export and render your image sequence to and just pull from that and you'll have it ready to go without needing to re-render it. And then we have 24 seconds. Full size format is 1K square. So I am using the non-commercial version of Nuke and we are limited to that resolution. We cannot go up to 2K, but that is totally fine for what we're doing here. Now here's my caustic setup within Nuke. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I just have a noise node, transform, color correct, and a write node. So if we just make it from scratch here, let's start off with a noise node. So what we're going for is this. You'll see the default noise node looks quite a bit different. So we're going to have some work to do here to match that up. What you can do here is let's limit these settings boxes that show up for each node so that they don't start stacking up and it gets confusing. So I'm going to limit this to two. Now what I can do here is simply double click on this, it'll bring it to the top, and then I double click on this, and now I can just match these settings to this. All right, so what we wanna do here is invert that, make the type turbulence, change the XY size to 100. Now if we play it, you're gonna notice that it's obviously static, kind of a dead in the water, as it were. So what we're gonna to need to do is add some motion to the ocean. Um, so to do that, what we're gonna do is animate the Z offset here. So we're just gonna to go to our first frame, change this or right click on this and then go set key. Go to the last frame, change it to six, hit enter. And because auto key's on, it'll automatically set a keyframe. Now we can play this. There we go, we're making some progress. So we still need to refine it a bit further though. So let's change the octaves to two. Lucanarity, if that is how you pronounce it, I'm gonna pretend like it is, to 1.5. Uh, the gain to 0.6, and the gamma from 0.5 to 5. There we go, now it should match one to one pretty much, and uh, just as I suspected, it does, great. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to make a transform. So tab, transform, arrow down, enter. Let's attach that to this. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do is scale it up so that we can create an overscan, some extra uh, padding as it were, around the edge of the frame so that we have that extra space to actually move the caustic pattern from the bottom to the top on the Y translate. So to do this, next part, we're gonna to go to the first frame. And then we're going to click on the top part of this gizmo here. If you don't have it as visible, you might have your overlays turned off. So turn it back on, just hit Q. So now you're gonna click on this and then hold shift and drag it down so that this is kind of hugging the top edge of the frame. And then right click on the Y translate and go set key and then go to the last frame. And now drag it up. Click, shift, hold shift, drag it up so it's hugging the bottom edge of the frame. Doing the same thing, just in reverse. And it'll auto keys on so it set that keyframe for us. Now if we play it, you'll see it's doing that kind of effect as if the ocean surface is kind of moving over um, or moving forwards, top to bottom, whatever, however you want to describe it. And that is exactly what's going on here. So there we go. Now we want to create a color correct. There we go. Let's attach that guy to the transform. And this is just uh, effectively to add some contrast to the, to the caustics. So we're going to bump this up to like 1.7, I could just check this here. 
1.78, 1 1.7 is probably good enough. And then the gain to 0 0.41, 0 0.41, yeah. But let's just change it to 0 0.4, don't need to be that precise. And then now let's create our right node. Attach that to that. Now we just wanna define the file output path. So I'll just double click on this guy and you'll see I've already done that here into this kind of general directory on my hard drive, comp tools. And then I've named the uh, image output to caustics underscore pound sign, pound sign, four of them, hashtag, whatever you wanna call it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna replace those pound signs with the frame number that's being rendered out within your image sequence. And then you have to specify the file type. So here I've just left it at PNG, which I believe is the default. You could also use JPEG or Targa, whatever floats your boat. I'm sure TIFF would also work, but for all intents and purposes, PNG is just fine. And then you want to make sure you specify your frame range, click render, and then make sure again that frame range is specified, click okay. And then it'll render out that uh, caustic image sequence that we have here. And there you go. So that is how you create the caustic image sequence within Nuke. And then what you can do then is pop on over to your 3D program and put it to use. But if, again, if we go back to our uh, reference, it looks pretty accurate, I would say, for most uses. Um, I would say this is a, a pretty good result and I'm quite happy with it. So. Let's pop on over to Blender now and I'll show you how to attach this image sequence to a light source. All right, see you in Blender. All right, so here we are in Blender where I'm just gonna show you how to use that caustic image sequence and attach it to a light source so that we can get the result that we're seeing here. So first of all, I'm just gonna quickly go over my scene as a whole to show you more precisely how I achieved this overall look. Uh, so first of all, if we click on the render camera here, you'll see that I have my focal length set to 35 millimeters. And then I have depth of field turned on with the sphere here set to the focus object. And then I have the f-stop set to 0.2. Uh, here, if we click on the caustic light source itself, you'll see that I've just moved it, positioned it, rotated it just over the frame coming down onto the scene here. And then I have the color set to this kind of cool tint. And then the spot size is 100, blend one, strength 3500. Then I have the caustic image sequence being plugged into the color input of the emission node. Next, I have the ground plane here that I've created. I've added a few edges to the back end of it to curve up that back part. And then I've added a subdivision modifier to it. And then for the UV sphere, um, Oh, I'm gonna move that back there. For the UV sphere that we can see here, which is just that guy obviously right at the center, I have a subdivision modifier applied to it as well. And then I have a pretty basic material applied to it with just a bit of a warm tone applied to the base color. That's just to integrate it within the scene uh, just a little bit more. That's completely preference though. You do not need to do that. You can make that white if you'd like as well. Might wanna make it stand out a little bit more, up to you. And then the metallic is set to one, specular one, and the roughness is just uh, near the center there. Next, if we go to the volume box, uh, I just have it encompassing basically the entire scene. And then I have a volume scatter node plugged into the volume input. The density is at 0 0.01. So now before we go into the caustic light into detail so that I can show you more precisely the steps that I took to create it, let's jump on over to Pure Ref. So you'll see here that I have a bunch of the reference again that I've gathered. So I just wanna note a couple of things here that you see consistently across uh, all of these images. The first thing is that you'll notice that there's a bit of a warm tint uh, across all of the caustic patterns within these images. You'll also notice that all of the caustics are quite bright, almost to the point of being overexposed, for example, here and here, uh, as well as there. So keeping that in mind, let's pop back to Blender. And now what we're going to do is use this light that I've already created just as reference to create our new light and, and repurpose this. So I'm just going to turn that off for now. And then what I'm going to do is go Shift A, Light, Spot. Now I'm just going to use this uh, gizmo tool here, these arrows, to move it up and to the side, 
back to the side. There you go. Depending on how you have your scene oriented, it might be easier to move it relatively to the side. Um, but to make this gizmo tool visible, if it is not for you, you can just press T or you can click on this button here. Alternatively, you can press G and then Z, X, or Y to constrain it to the axes to move it around. And there you go. And you can also use R, as you see here, to rotate it. Then again, Z, X, Y to constrain it to the axes. But how you do that is totally up to you. For now, I'm just going to copy these values over into this new light so that we can match the look, uh, at least try to match the look more precisely uh, in this new image that we are creating. So I'm just gonna paste that, that here, one more, minus 56, there we go. All right, next thing that we're gonna wanna do here is turn on use nodes for this new light in the uh, light settings there. Turn on use nodes, and we're gonna wanna turn up the strength to 3500. There we go, it's coming in a little bit hot, but that will work when we apply our caustic, caustic image sequence to it. So the next thing that we'll wanna do, if we reference this again, is increase the spot size to 100. And that'll just make it so that you can see it uh, in more of the frame, so that the caustics take up more space uh, within the visual real estate. And then we're gonna change the blend to one to create more of that gradual fall off, which makes it a little bit easier on the eyes, a little bit more believable. All right, then the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is change the color up here uh, to match the color of this one. So let's just click on that, go to hex, copy that, and then we can click back on this light, click on the color, paste it. There we go. All right, now what we're gonna to wanna to do is apply that image sequence to the color input of the emission node. So there's a couple ways we can do this. First of all, what we can do is go Shift A, type in image texture, that'll pop up. And then what we can do is just search for it within the directory that you've exported that caustic image sequence to from Nuke. Alternatively, if we just delete that, you can just go to your finder on your Mac. I'm just going to leave full screen for a second here. You can just go into your Finder on your Mac or alternatively uh, Windows Explorer on your PC and then navigate to that directory that you exported the sequence to and then you can just drag in the image into the shader editor and it'll just pop in a new image texture node with it already plugged in there. So now what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that the frames accommodate for the entire frame length that we rendered out of Nuke here within this directory. So one way you can do it is shift click. And if you do that, it'll automatically update the frames here with however many uh, frames you've selected using that uh, shift click method there. So you could just go click on that first frame, hold shift, go to the bottom, click on frame 200, boom, there you go. Alternatively, you can just manually enter that in there. That's usually my method of choice. So there we go. Now that that's there, what we can do is plug in the color to the color. And as you'll see, uh, not looking too caustic-y. So what we're gonna have to do now is create that mapping and texture coordinate node that we see here with these values. So first I'm just going to copy these over so we can just match them up a little bit quicker. Paste them in there. And now the best way to create these guys on any image texture node is you can create them from scratch like you would anything else. Search for it, create it. Alternatively, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and then add-ons, search for ner uh, Node Wrangler, not Nerd Wrangler, and then, <laughs> and then make sure it's turned on. Uh, and then what you can do is go Control, with it selected, go Control T, and it'll automatically create those guys for you, plug them in, done and done. So now what we're gonna wanna do is match up these values here uh, like I've done after some trial and error. So what we're gonna have to do here first though is assign the normal to the vector. Now we can already see those caustics coming through. However, we see those clear seams within the frame, which we do not want obviously. So that is why I entered in those values for the location um, to kind of nudge those seams out of the frame. So if we just go 0.5 again, here we go, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, not point. 
There we go, gone, goodbye seams. And then let's change the scale to 0.7. Boom, so uh, that is it. So now if we turn on the original one, turn that off, it's pretty much the same thing. There we go. So now to test this, what we can do here is let's just hit pause on that guy for a second. And now what I'm gonna do is go view render and I'm just gonna pop out this, bring out the image tab, go down a slot, and then I'm gonna go render, render image. All right, so that's how that looks. Uh, now I'm just gonna do another render. I'm gonna change the frame and do a new render to show you that it is indeed working and it is actually uh, a moving caustic pattern. So I'm just gonna switch to this slot and do another render. All right, so as you can see here, after doing the second render on frame 70, where I was at frame 50 on the first one, you can see that the image sequence is working. It is doing exactly what we want it to do. So there we go. That is how you make a caustic image sequence in Nuke and how to use it in Blender. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the lesson and I will see you in the next one.